It's been a long time, ladies and germs, but yes, the doctor is back. It's Aaron again. Today, I got my first interview ever with Contagious TV um, with State Champs. I got to see them yesterday with With the Punches and Forever Came Calling. State Champs is definitely one of my favorite bands right now. Um, if you're a fan of A Lost Words or Transit, any uh, Man of a Board even, if you want to if you want to throw them in there, um, you definitely like State Champs. Uh, these guys are out at Albany, and they'll be on tour for the next couple, uh, next month. So make sure wherever you guys are at, go to their Facebook page. I'll leave it in the description. Uh, make sure you guys check out uh, them on tour if you can, because these guys are definitely solid. These guys are really, really good. So uh, here's my interview. I interviewed uh, Tyler and Derek, and we were just hanging out in New Britain at a buddy's house. So, yeah, let's get into it. Um, I'm actually going to start off with one of their one of their songs off of their record, Apparently I Am Nothing, and it is called Hot and Bothered. Definitely one of my favorite songs. So enjoy, enjoy the interview, guys. Doctor Vlog, uh, it's your boy Aaron once again, and today is we're doing our first interview for Contagious TV, and today I'm sitting down with uh, Derek and Tyler from uh, the State Champs. Say hello, fellas. What's going on? Uh, uh, they just played a show tonight at Tuxedo Junction in um, Danbury, Connecticut. Great set, and um, only, only, yeah, only good things, guys. Uh, I love the set. You guys sounded awesome, and. Uh, only good things from here. So, kind of like go over how you guys started, like how you guys met up. Um, well, we started in 2010 when some of us were in high school still. I was, I'm the youngest in the band, so I was still in high school. Most of the other guys weren't. And, uh, started with Tyler here and Bill, who plays bass for us. They, I think it started in a gym. Playing a fitness. It did. It started at Playing a Fitness. Uh, 
basically Bill coming up to me saying, hey man, like we had a lot of the same friends, something like that, right? Essentially. And like, we, we should be a band and like, get together. Yeah, Bill wanted to get together and play like metal. Or no, like Southern Rock, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like the Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty like much. That. And, and Tyler rejected and I said, said I would like to start a pop punk band. And Bill was like, oh yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> so we did that yeah. instead. And that that's kind of where we're at now. That, it, it's yeah. not a, really a cool story, but that's just how it happened. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then me and Derek have always been friends since we're like 14. Yeah, mutual bands and mutual friends. And just, uh, you know, it worked out. And now we're best friends, so we're cool from here. Yeah, and you guys are out of Albany. Is everybody in the Albany, greater yeah, Albany, Albany area? Yeah, yeah, yeah for the most part. Outside, so like... I guess uh, we say Albany because we're all from different surrounding areas, but, you know, it's where we're from, so. <laughs> and uh, Derek, how old are you? I'm 19. And I'm 20. And 20, so the other guys are, like, around the same age for the most part. Same age, Bill's the oldest, he's 21. Right. Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, sounds were you, were, like, listening to when you guys were first signed the Pop Punk Band? Was there a specific bands you guys listened to, the draw from, for influence? I know. We'll really start hitting the bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I really wasn't even into like actual pop punk. It really wasn't until that revolt. It was before the real like pop punk revolution had like developed really and I was into a lot like I listened to a lot of everything. I still do listen to a lot of everything, but it was a lot of like heavier stuff, some hardcore, some like metal course, even stuff like that. And then like obviously grew up on like a lot of classics like New Found Glory and Fight stuff like that. I was into I was big into like Thrice and Senses Fail, stuff like that when I was younger. And like I know Tyler had a lot more straight pop punk because he played yeah. pop punk bands before. Yeah. And uh I don't know, we all listened to like hardcore stuff with like Trapped Under Ice, stuff like that. And we even like like heavier like weird stuff like every time I die <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh <laughs> like Bill listened to a whole lot of rap. Like he loves like like Meek Mill. Like Meek Mill, Rick Ross, stuff like that. <laughs> like real ghetto stuff. I personally listen to a lot of R and B. I'm a big Chris Brown fan, like Justin Bieber. I'll listen to Justin Bieber. <laughs> I listen to a lot of like pop punk and emo. Like, yeah, a lot of like the guys with nineties Midwest emo shit like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean Oh, Seriously, yeah. anything. I, like, I'm big into new music these days. Like yeah. I'll listen, I love. I just like listening to new releases and see where like, see where like music is going production wise these days and stuff. Like it, we even listen to a lot of electronic stuff like that. Oh hell yeah! Other things that I forgot to mention. Like you find a to a lot of like house music and you get into like some weird twist shit and stuff to dance to. Yeah. Right. So were you guys signed to like a local label before signing to? Yeah, we, no, we were talking about it before. Uh, we've talked to small labels before, but we never really committed to anything. We were kind of waiting to see what could actually happen, and glad we did, because we did just sign to Pure Noise Records out of San Francisco, and, like, we have our first release coming out soon, and see how it goes from there. I guess we'll make a definite decision on whether we regret it or not when that happens, so. But for now, we're definitely excited. For the viewers at home, other bands signed by Pure, Pure Noise are, like, I Call Fives, the story so far, yeah, yeah. and other bands like that. I can't even remember your your first release. Our first release was like an old demo that we had remixed and mastered with four new songs that we put out in the beginning of 2011. It was called Apparently I'm Nothing. Yeah. And uh, it was eight songs, and that's kind of what we had to base ourselves off of and start as a band and like go from there. And we we kind of were a band off of that release for too long in our eyes. So we're glad to finally. That's way too long. New coming out and like, uh, but yeah, that was our first release. And for people who are familiar with, uh, apparently I'm nothing. What can they expect from the new release, uh, Overslept? Well, I guess when we first put out, apparently I'm nothing, we were thinking like, that was again, that was the beginning of 2011, and it was when like, I don't really know what we were listening to, but it was like straight up traditional pop punk yeah. songs in my eyes, and like, now that we have all like expanded the way we listen to music and like how we listen to everything now it's like I would say a lot more mature like that's what anyone would say with a new release but like I don't know what would you say now <laughs> like you're probably better at this stuff I mean it's just better it's better it's, I don't know, We're, it's better we it's actually well like we actually like our songs yeah. Yeah. it's one thing like that like sure we liked our songs when we put them out in our first release but they grew old very quick 
and I, I don't see the new songs growing old. We we actually like listening yeah. to that. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, that's a good start. Yeah, there's. So we'll base it off of that. There's that natural progression and then that natural maturity there. Yeah, I mean, Definitely. like when we when me and Bill first started the band, like we pretty much sucked. Like I'll, I'll be honest, <laughs> we weren't that good at well, like at playing our instruments, and like we we both fully blossomed, you know, and it's just like it's cool. It's cool to be good. So right now, <laughs> right now we're gonna play uh, we're gonna play uh, the song Critical off of the uh, the new record Overslept, and that's gonna be coming out when that's September 11th. Comes out September 11th. With uh, with state champs and some buddies out here in New Britain, Connecticut, we're hanging out, chilling. Chilling. And uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get a little bit personal with both of these guys. So uh, so Tyler, uh, when did you when did you when did you start playing guitar? What was what was your first equipment? Like the first band you started listening to? Tyler played in the deathcore band. Yeah, but <laughs> I, started, <laughs> I started playing guitar when I was like 12 and I had an Epiphone Dot. Nice, dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I really regret selling it. I fucked up. It's a, such a nice guitar. Yeah, I know you're talking I about had, like, I had, like a little fucking like, like Fender combo and I used to play Sense and Fail songs in my room. <laughs> it was sick. Well, then, but you played. Yeah, and then, then I turned 14. You know, I skipped two years and. <laughs> you like your time? <laughs> I skipped the 13th year, and then I started playing the death metal band, and then I turned 17. Three, three years later, I was in a shitty pop punk band, and then 
you know, oh. I started this band with Derek and Bill. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, pretty much it, I mean. Well, I mean, out of all of us, Tyler also has the most touring, had had the most yeah. touring experience playing yeah. in an actual relevant pop punk band before this, which was good. And, like, so at least he had some sort of sense to know, like, what's good and what's not with touring when it came to getting down to business with State Champs, so he kind of was man. the... He kind of I am is, the man. Was, <laughs> was and still is dad of the band. which Still am dad. Yeah. So <laughs> Keep <laughs> everybody in line. That's how that works yeah. out. Then the, uh, what's the equipment you're playing out now for the, uh, all the equipment junkies out there? Uh, now I, I have a, a custom telly that I, I pieced together myself. Uh, I, have, I have two custom pickups made by my friend Josh Hernandez. Just hit him up. Uh, home record pickup. Um, shout out. <laughs> I play an Orange Rocker 50, shout out to Orange, and I have a Marshall 1980s JCM 800 cab. It's got G1265s in it. Love them. <laughs> nerding out. It's a nerding out. Now, for, uh, for Derek over here, what got you into singing? Like, did you just start in, like, a choir or, like, something like that? Yeah, nothing like? like that. Like, obviously, I think everyone is in their elementary school chorus, so I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna go there, but, uh, I was always self-taught by my mom, who sang, like, since I was little, growing up singing in the car with my mom for, like, years and years. And I'm also a, an only child with a single mom, so it's kind of that kind of bond there. Yeah, and uh, I never took any sort of, like, real lessons or anything. I, I don't know how to read music. I really wish I did, and I want to start, and I want to take lessons, but... Not too late. It, it's <laughs> never too late. No time. So, yeah, no time, but I would love to. I really would. And, uh, I don't know. I had never really thought of actually singing in a band until we started really talking about doing state champs, and it was kind of peer pressure from Tyler. Yeah, honest. he almost didn't come. I was really not going to do it. I, was, I wasn't going to do it. He out. was uh, lifting weights for hockey practice. Oh, okay. <laughs> boy, yeah. So we got a hockey player over here. Yeah, that's another, thing. That's another right. thing. I had other passions my whole a. life. I played hockey my whole life, and a. since I was maybe 10 years old, I was planning on taking hockey as far as I can, and until the summer of 2010, I realized that I, there was just a hidden passion for music that I had never really gotten to, to push further, and, and Tyler was kind of the reason that I did. Yeah, and I'm right. really glad I did, I guess. Put it this way, uh, Derek has a couple of videos online on his Facebook of him, like, killing these songs, like, when you have, like, a fucking Sydney and Color song, it's great. Uh, Fuck yeah. Free Hell yeah. cover, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, I listen to it, like... I'm I'm a fan of Derek, <laughs> and I was, I was like, yo, there's nobody's kids not singing in my band, like, because the previous band I was in, like, all, all actually all my previous bands, you know, vocally weak, you know, I like the band, but you know, music, you know, music's good, you know, sing yourself, but that's besides the point. Like, essentially, um, him and Bill are really good friends. Like, me and Derek, like, we were friends when we were younger, and then faded away because both of our bands broke up. So I was like, yo, like, Bill, get Derek to sing our band. <laughs> so, long story short, I caved in. And he we, came, we came to a yeah. first practice, we did a cartel cover, and we were like, all right, this yeah. didn't really work out. And we, 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 we wrote <laughs> Rooftops. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that first practice, we wrote our song, Rooftops. And it was off, It was kind of just a sailing from there. You played drums on the roof demo. Really? <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> now, who did you look to for like like vocal influences? Like, was there anybody prominent out in your mind that like to help to help you like develop your voice? It is. Cause cause when I cause I went when I listened to your voice, I I think like like Matty Arsenal and like some Johnny Craig in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. You hit the nail on Johnny Craig. Yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. The but, uh, on the runs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of his biggest fans, to be honest. In a vocal sense, nothing else. Yeah, I, met him I, have feel, I feel you on that. Met him plenty of times before, and I don't want to associate myself with him. Maybe now. I heard he's cleaned up, but whatever. No, um, don't but believe I, everything you hear. Yeah, and that was kind of when we started. That was what I was into. That like back when I was like listening to a lot of like weirder stuff. I did like a lot of that kind of stuff. But growing up, it was more. Definitely, I would say Fall Out Boy was a big one. Hell yeah. And um, now, I would almost say it's a lot more newer music, like a lot of R&B and stuff like that. But, um, even, <laughs> I don't even want to know, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know. As the, the As the rest of the band rolls in. As the rest of the band rolls in. Gentlemen, we're, we're doing an interview. Uh, ask uh, Phil a question. <laughs> Let's ask Phil a question. Let me think. Um, <laughs> when did you start playing bass? Who were your major influences? And... 
<laughs> so nervous. So oh nervous. Good luck. Put you on the spot, man. Get, do it up, man. Yeah, Come on. He wins, probably. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Flee. 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 Fucking flee. Flee, flee and only flee. <laughs> the only. <laughs> we can't. Let's put it this way. We kind of put a bass in Bill's hands when we started the band. He wanted to play in a dark. sense. In a sense, we put a bass in Bill's hands, and we made him who he is, and he's, uh, it's been nothing but progress. Right? I'm the guy made you who he is. I made you. Um, and I mean, we couldn't be happier that it, we did, so that's that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Now, how long have you guys been touring for? Like, how many big tours have you gone on? Like, this is our first big, big tour. We had, like, to be honest, we had never really done anything longer than weeks on weeks. Like, we've done week tours, we've done okay. weekends. Since we started being a band in 2010, we were automatically like, all right, let's start going, we'll just go, go, go. So it was weekend after weekend, regional stuff, and we never really had gotten out of the Northeast. We recently started, we just got done with the Canadian tour that was a week long. We've been out to Chicago and back, but we've really never been south or out to the West Coast at all. And this is our first long tour where we get to experience at least the whole U.S. besides the West Coast. And then when we get back to this, this is the month long. Hopefully we get over to the West Coast and then start talking about some overseas stuff. There's a lot in the works. And I remember you guys talking about how, uh, with the punches, kind of like connecting or kind of like best friends or... Did you, you guys had played before, obviously. And yeah, they were our first uh, really good friends as another band, uh, I would say. Uh, because when we played one of our first big shows in Poughkeepsie, where they're from, yeah. with uh, with fireworks and transit men overboard. Oh, right. Our biggest Slow shows Slow that we had played, and it was like one of our first shows. It's definitely a solid lineup. Oh, for sure. For sure. And we were stoked to, to even be there. So when we got done with our set, uh, Jesse and Dustin from With the Punches immediately grabbed us off stage, brought us aside, like, who the hell are you guys? Like, where are you? <laughs> like, who are you? They had no idea. And so we hit it off right from there, and, like, they kind of took us under their wing. They're yeah. much older than us. So yeah. it's like, in a sense, from the start, we were looking up to them because they had much more experience with stuff. But, I mean, couldn't be happier now with, like, the relationship we have. I mean, they're taking us out for a month on tour, so... Right on. And now all, the, all these, like, weekend tours and uh, week tours, anything crazy, like your craziest tour story, like, there, it could be multiple, yeah. it could be one in particular, it doesn't even matter. Uh, well, we hope to have a better answer for you, <laughs> because I can't even imagine yeah, I mean, going down. I mean, wild shit's happen, but it's like, it's kind of like, you know, that, that heat of the moment shit that you're laughing yeah, at. Yeah, it really, like, I mean, to be there. Uh, we, some little stuff, we've been out to Ohio, and we had, we had one show planned, and ended up spending four days there as Bill was in the hospital. Oh, he had, God. what is MRSA that? He had MRSA on his foot. Uh, Look, ooh. <laughs> it looks, so, we've had all the, we've done the whole van breakdown in Canada. Yep. Uh, get towed. Our friend got us in his SUV, brought us to the Jamboree Festival in Ohio. Yeah. Then back to Canada, through the border like five times, picking up our van, driving it home, like still a piece of shit. Now, <laughs> <laughs> we still have that van today, and we're really and hoping that nothing happens. Less of a piece around. of shit. So, you know, there's a lot to come as far as crazy tour stories come within the next month. Yeah. And um, they're also touring with it's uh, with with the Punches, State Chance, of course, and they also have uh, Forever Came Calling. Do you guys ever play with them before? We or? played a couple shows because they've been over to the West Coast a number of times. East as Coast? far as or, I mean, East Coast a number of times, and we've met up with them on just single dates, but nothing crazy. And we had always introduced ourselves and like said, oh yeah, we should do something more. And uh, so it's cool that we get to spend a month with them now. We're getting closer and closer. It's only day two, so I can only imagine how close we'll get. And what shit goes down within the next month. Dream lineup. Like, what, like, it doesn't even have to be a sh one particular show. It can be an entire tour, but it has to include you. Okay. I was so bands you would, like, only dream about touring with. I had thought about this one before, but I had I never really came up with a solid answer. I, I'd pick Fall Out Boy as one of the bands. For yeah, sure. yeah. That's a, that's a given. That's a good one. It doesn't even have to be in the same genre. It can it can go across like multiple like. <laughs> well, then Skrillex, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. I mean, I would say Blink One Eighty Two. That'd be cool. I would say I would say Fall Out Boy. That's that would be my guess. Um, 
Yeah, but they, are they relevant still? Yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't. I it doesn't wouldn't. even matter that they, it doesn't even matter that they're relevant, you know? Okay, um, simple plan. Hell yeah. <laughs> simple plan. Simple plan, good Charlotte combo, seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I'd be down with that. Hell yeah. And, what else? I mean, there's, there's think times, too. There's a ton of bands that could be, like, I'm yeah. trying to think like time, like time frames too. Like I'm trying. I'm, when I when I think of bands that you probably, would, you guys would probably tour with, and you're going across all genres, I think like Make Do and Mend, and like Hostage Calm, and um, yeah. I mean I I'm fans of them definitely. Yeah. It's just uh, it, when thinking of like the pop punk genre, it, it gets broken down into like subgenres, subgenres and sh- subcategories, and I wouldn't fall those two into our subcategory. I don't know, maybe. Hard to, hard to think. If you think about it. Both those bands are also out on Warped Tour, and we'd love to do Warped Tour. That'd yeah. be cool. <laughs> also, I'm also thinking like Transit, Touche More, a lot of stuff. Yeah, Transit, we've like done Days of Before, and uh, stuff like, uh, and like the story so far, we're going to Transit Them. Obviously, that would be awesome. Uh, I mean, bands that we like, like have in line to tour with now, I mean, is kind of what we're looking for anyway. So I feel like we're kind of in the right place at the right time. So for now, we'll see what happens. So thanks for talking to us, gentlemen. We appreciate it. And uh, you guys want to play one of your uh, one of your songs for the folks at home? Yeah. Something they need to listen to? Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks for having us. And uh, we'll send you off with uh, our single from our album, Apparently I'm Nothing, called How It Used To Be. So How It Used To Be is going to end the night. Peace.